In this video, I'm going to show you how you can train a unit model for nuclei segmentation. So first, I'm going to open uh, the notebook entitled Training. And with all the codes that come uh, in, in this GitHub folder, uh, they're all organized the same way. We have the first panel here, code panel, uh, that is uh, used to load all the Python packages and the codes we need for what we are doing. So in this particular example for training a unit model. We then have a second panel to define the parameters, a third panel to do the actual job, which is here training the unit model. And for the training notebooks, we have an additional panel, which allows us to use TensorBoard to look at the validation and NAS for both training and validation data set. So uh, I'm going to first run the first panel and, you know, before each code panel, we have a text uh, panel, so you can run it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't do anything. Or you can directly select the next one, but, you know, it doesn't change anything. So here I'm running the first panel, loading everything we need. Now it's down. I can run the second panel. And I'm going to define all the parameters. So the first parameters actually is uh, which data we want to use. So if I click on select, I'm directly in data sets. That's where all the data is uh, in this, uh, in, in this uh, unit uh, folder. So I'm going to go into nuclei segmentation to Fs. And here I can choose between uh, the, the inputs, input data for confocal, wide field, or confocal and wide field. So we know that unit is not great when we pull everything together, even though if it, it's not that bad. But uh, here I'm just going to test, uh, the, I'm going to use the confocal images for training my unit model. So I'm going to um, click on input CF, and then I have the training and the validation folder. So if I click on training, I have two folders, one for the images and one for mask. If I go into images, I have all the uh, confocal images. And if I go in mask, I have the corresponding uh, mask uh, so with the same name so the algorithm knows which uh, which segmentation mask corresponds to which image so i'm going to select this folder and then you can either select the validation directory which we're going to do but if you don't you have this final parameter here ratio of training and validation that can be used so here it's defined at 0 0.2 so 20 percent it could be less it could be more it depends on you but if you don't have validation directory, and if you keep this parameter as 0.2, it means that it's the algorithm is going to randomly pick 20% of your training data as validation. So you can still train your model. But here we have validation directory. So I'm going to just click on select, nuclei segmentation into Fs, and input CF. And I'm going to select the validation. So it's organized the same way, images and mask. All right, so next, we need to define uh, the folder where we're going to save the model we're going to train. So when we click on select, we're directly in the models directory. And that's where we want to save it. So I'm just going to select this folder. And the next parameter, uh, so we, we're not going to use it, but that can be convenient. So uh, when we when we check this box, we're going to also save a chance of flow safety model. And that can be uh, convenient because uh, within um, Fiji, if you download uh, the CSB DIP plugin, it allows you to run a uh, TensorFlow safe model. So for example, if you have collaborators that are interested by using uh, a model you just trained for a given segmentation, for example, a unit model for segmentation, but they don't know how to train, they don't know how to use notebooks they don't want, they can still use this model in Fiji uh, as long as it's in the right format. So if you click on this, you're going to have a zip uh, a zip uh, folder for your model in, in addition to your uh, actual model in which file uh, format. And so then you can use it in, in Fiji and you can give it to collaborators. So the next parameters, they are um, related to data. So we have one channel, which is DAPI. We have three classes, nuclei, nuclei controls, and background. Uh, then we need to define the imaging field. So we have 512 by 512 images. We could define it as 512 by 512. But here we're going to keep it to 256 by 256. And in that case, um, the algorithm is going to actually randomly crop each image um, into a 256 by 256 smaller image. And it's going to uh, 
crop it differently uh, each for each epoch and for each image. Uh, so we're going to keep it that uh, that values for uh, imaging field. Then we need to define the learning rate, so we're going to keep it uh, at this value, so we could change it, obviously. Uh, then we have a number of epochs, we're going to keep 100 epochs, and the number of augmentation, we are not going to do any augmentation, so that's something you could uh, test, of course, if, if you train this model, and if you use this notebook. But here we're going to uh, keep it to 100 epochs and, and no augmentation, no data augmentation. And finally, we can change the batch size, but I don't have very powerful GPU here, so I'm going to keep it to one. And so this parameter, we saw it, if, if you don't have an initial directory, it gives you the, the amount of data you put in the validation from the training. And so now that all parameters are defined, I'm just going to run the next panel, uh, which is going to start the training. So if I run it, you have a bunch of warnings, it's fine, it's just uh, because, uh, you know, there, there, there are going to be new version for which this code uh, won't work, but for now it's still fine. If you install all the, the Python version that were in the requirement text, and now you see, uh, so we see what we're going to train it for 100 epoch. This is the first epoch. You have uh, the last... Um, Sorry, loss and, and accuracy for the training, uh, loss and accuracy for validation, and so on. So I'm just going to uh, speed up the video uh, so you don't have to wait for the entire training, even though it's pretty uh, fast, as you can see, about one second per epic. All right, it's done. So we could look at uh, you know, the evolution of loss and accuracy for both training and validation from these numbers. But we can actually use TensorBoard, and it's much, uh, much more comfortable to do it uh, that way. So I don't know why when you first uh, run TensorBoard, it just go like this, and it's um, not doing anything. And if you wait long enough, it's just going to tell you that it's not working. So what you can do is just stop it and run it again, and that should work. And this is what we have. So if we go there, you see we had one model, the one uh, that we just um, we just trained, and we can look at the accuracy and the loss for training data sets. As you can see, the accuracy is going starting pretty low and then going up, and it seems that it's uh, pretty stable. Same thing for the loss going down and reaching a kind of plateau. Uh, now we can. Very importantly, it's, we have to look at the accuracy and the loss for validation. And when we look at this, so we see that the loss is clearly uh, decreasing at the beginning and then reaching a plateau. So maybe we could try a few more epochs, but I don't think it would change much. But we could, uh, we could try differently. Uh, the accuracy is also reaching some kind of plateau, so that looks. Uh, fine. Um, now it's always also important to compare your values. So you see when you go on the curve you have uh, the different values, so smooth and, and actual, and you have also the time. So you see that it took uh, 1 minute and 14 seconds to train on the models, pretty, pretty fast. Um, so we have a, a final value of 1.0.24 for the loss, validation loss. If we look at uh, the training loss, it's a bit uh, a, a bit smaller, and, and, and similarly, we have uh, a, a bit so it's, it's, it's a bit higher for the, the accuracy in the training than in the validation. Uh, so, so this could uh, indicate that we actually are, um, are um, um, undefeating. Um, so we could try more epochs, but it seems that it's uh, converging to pretty stable values. So here probably, you know, data augmentation would help to um, have a, a you know, smaller difference between the values we have for training and for validation.